Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osei Wusukovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We give God all the praise and all the glory and I welcome you into this session and I believe God will bless you as we open up your heart and mind to receive from him. Shall we get into the scriptures? Please, let's get to Hebrews chapter 11 and then verse number 3. Hebrews 3. Yeah. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. What it means is that before things will happen in this natural realm, there must be some movement in the spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, so our subject today is that movement in the spirit. What is happening in the spirit realm? If we begin to discern what is happening in the spirit realm, they will begin to flow with what God is about to do. There is this scripture also, I love it so much. It is in Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 and then verse 5. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 5. He said, As thou knowest not what is in the way of a spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with a child, even so thou knowest not the works of God, who maketh all. Hallelujah. You see, when there is a movement in the spirit, then the thing God has prepared and imagined in his own plan, and those, some of them have even been de- declared as prophetic, will begin to manifest. Amen. Through faith, we understand that the things, through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, the truth is this. God can declare things from the, from the very beginning, the thing that will happen at the end. Why? Because that makes him God. He is not human. Hallelujah. But today we want to look at a, a story in the Bible in First Samuel chapter number 1. We want to look at Hannah and all that happened to her. First Samuel chapter 1, let's take from the verse number 7. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now early the priest sat upon the, the seat of a, a post of a temple of the law. Let's get to the verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Mm -hmm. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a male, a man, a man child, then I will give him Unto the law all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Mm-hmm. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Mm-hmm. Now, Hannah, she spake in her heart only, her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine. 
from, the, from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul unto the Lord. Count not thy heart made for a, a daughter of Belai, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Amen. You see, when we start reading this chapter, it talks about Elkanah and the wife Hannah. An interesting thing happened. The Bible said God has shut the womb. Why? Unless we meet him, we cannot te tell the reason. But when you read the account, there's something that come out. God was about to do something in Israel, which the scriptures have prophesied. That Shiloh will come, and after Shiloh, the kingdom will come. And God has determined that the time of Shiloh has come, and it's coming to an end. But he needed somebody who will lead the nation from Shiloh into the kingdom. And in his plan, he had found Hannah as be the woman to carry that vision. Praise God. But he never told anybody. All they did was just shut the womb. And in this grief and in his pain, in her desperation, she now started praying and fasting and seeking God. The Bible said every year, year by year, they came there. But this time around, it was different. She would not eat. He prayed a prayer, and this prayer touched three realms. First of all, it touched the husband. Why will you not eat? In fact, when you read the verse 8, there are a whole lot of why questions. Let's get to the verse 6. Elkanah, then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why we pass thou? And why it is thou not? Why is the heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? You see, her prayer first of all touched the husband. He was fasting and sorrowful and praying and pouring her heart before the Lord. The husband came in trying to console her with why questions. But those were not answers he need those were not the answers he needed. So something happened. She moved on praying. By the time you go to verse 9, the verse 9, mm -hmm, something happened. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now early the priest sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. Now, I want you to see, the, those prayers have touched one, the husband. Now the priest, the priest was at post. He was sitting right there. So he was observing Hannah. And he looked at this woman. She would not speak the word out. So he could not hear what he was saying. But he saw her praying. And she thought, the, man, the priest thought he was drunk. Let's get to the verse 10. Mm -hmm. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept. So, she prayed. So you see, the priest also have taken notice of her. And he thought he was drunk. But Hannah was not drunk. He was only desperate and was filled with pain and bitterness. And all that was going through her heart. But he was pouring his, her heart unto the Lord. And it was... And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Ellie marked her mouth. Ellie marked her mouth. And Hannah, you see, so the prayer touched who? The husband, the priest, and now who? The Lord. I want you to know something that all the three were involved in what was about to happen. Praise the Lord. This was the husband. They were going to give birth to a son. And he was praying. Those prayers were touched the heart of the man. And now, the priest was there. Now, Hannah, she spoke in her heart 
only her lips moved, but her mouth was, her voice was not heard. Therefore, Ellie thought that she had been drunken. Mm-hmm. 14. And Ellie said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. She was not drunk. He was a woman of sorrowful heart, desiring things from God. And now her prayer have touched who? The husband. The next person was the priest. Why? Because when you read the story, you will find that the priest will be also be involved in the life of who? Samuel, that unborn child. So God has set up that agenda and brought him to the center, this woman Hannah. And he was praying, and the effect of that prayer was to affect all these people. Mm -hmm. And then he said unto her, how long will thou be drunken? Okay, for 15. And I answered and said, no, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor drunk drink, but I have poured out my soul unto, before the Lord. I have poured out what? my soul before the Lord. If you have somebody to pray to, then you need to turn to the Lord. Hallelujah. He had prayed. He had prayed and poured her heart. Out of sorrow, her cries and her tears have come before the Lord. Mm. She had prayed. She had prayed. And God have heard her prayer. Okay? See? thing. Uh-huh. Can not thy heart I made for a daughter of Belai? For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Listen, you see, that was the, the, all the praying. He was coming to that place where he will receive the blessing of the priest. Because those prayers were blessed. It was not just any prayer. But he prayed a prayer and the priest blessed. That may God go in peace and the God of Israel grant thee the precision of thy heart. You see, so now, that prayer had touched her, his husband, touched the priest, and touched heaven. And this prayer was also to fulfill some prophetic word that have happened in Genesis chapter number 49 where he said, Shiloh will come and the kingdom will begin. Hallelujah. So this son to be born, yet unborn, but in her grief and desperation, he had moved further to make a vow unto God that he knows that no razor will touch this son no strong drink will come to his mouth. The child will be a Nazarian. A Nazarian. A devoted person for God. Yes, the mother have dedicated everything before he was conceived. And God have heard his cry and agreed to those terms. Because he needed that devoted person to take over from Eli. Praise the Lord. So when you look at the whole thing, but I want you to look at something. I said our soldier is that Movement in the spirit. There were things happening in the realm of a spirit. The prophetic message which Jacob spoke, the season and the timing was up, and there was a shifting in the realm of a spirit. Something must happen. Eli and the children must pass on. Shiloh must end, and the kingdom must begin. But all these things were happening, but they were all in the plan of God. They have been that prophetic declaration. There are things to come, but no one knew it, but God was holding on to it. But he needed that devoted person, the one devoted to God, who will come. He will not. He was born, and this man was born. Before he even was born, he was dedicated to God. Wow. And so he came in there, as a prophet of God, Samuel appeared. A young boy to be taught by Eli. Eli was a man who blessed the mother and said, May the God of Israel grant thee that request. And that child was standing before him. And he never knew him. But he also blessed him 
and taught him how to hear the voice of God. Because Eli was a priest. He had walked many years with the law. At least he knows something about God. So Samuel was devoted in the temple and in the house of God. Taking care of many things there. Hallelujah. So now God has a transition plan. Ready. That young boy is in there. He's here at Shiloh. The police was happy with him. Blessed him. Praise God. You see what am I saying? The scripture is telling us something very interesting. When you read Hebrews chapter number 11 verse 3. He said the thing seen. Through faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were made of things which do not appear. The things we see around us. There is a spiritual dimension. The things that are happening in the spirit influences the things that happen in the natural. Amen. I want you to have that in your heart and mind. And, be, and begin to understand that the spiritual things are more real than the natural one. Why? All the things in the natural are temporal. They are passing away. The things of our spirit are eternal. They abide forever. If you understand this one, then you can walk with God. Hallelujah. So you need to move from human level. While reasoning. Uh, you see people reason very logical, doing many, many, many good things. Are they bad? No, they are not bad. But they are temporal things. But there are also spiritual dimensions that, look, if you can discern the things that are made of God and the things that are to come, then you can move with God into the future. The future will be determined about what are, what are the things happening in the realm of the spirit. You don't know, you can't hear me. I am saying the future will be determined by what is happening in the realm of the spirit. If we can discern what God is about to do, <laughs> that we can flow with him in the now and know the things to come. Many a times, all we do is we plan the things according to our abilities and all those things. But most of the time we fail. Praise God. Why? There are natural reasonings. There are logical conclusions which we got there. But the things we see in the natural, the basis of it are from the spirit. If there's no spiritual dimension, you cannot see na natural manifestation. That's the point. Hallelujah. So listen. You have a human level, reasoning and logic. We have a spiritual level, mm, revelation and war and conviction. God will reveal it. He will show things to come. And then he will convict men by his spirit. Amen. That is why the scripture said, those who are his children will be led by the Spirit. Romans chapter number 8 and then verse number 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What the things God has prepared in the natural, in the spirit realm, the Bible says, I have not seen nada here yet. The thing which God has prepared for them that love him. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and then you find out verse number Eight and nine. He said, have they, if they had known. When they crucified Christ, the thing that will happen, they would not have crucified him. And the thing that I prepared for man, I have not seen neither ear head. The answer is the thing, I have not seen neither ear head. The thing which God has prepared for man. Or entered into the heart of man, the thing which God has prepared for them that love him. You see, it simply means the thing God has prepared in the realm of a spirit, your ear have not seen it. Your eye have not seen it. Your ear have not heard it. You have not found out. But the point is this. Those who know their God, they will be strong and do exploit. Why? Because they will have a discerning heart. They will understand the seasons and the timings. They will begin to move with their spirit. And God will begin to reveal to them things to come. If you do not understand these things, 
<laughs> then your understanding is blurred. You can see clear and you can see far. Praise God. But when you have a discerning heart, at times God can even come to you and put words in your mouth. He will speak to you. And this is where you know they were inspired of God. They were not coming from you. They are coming from who? God. Hallelujah. Aha. You see, but mm, God have given you his spirit that you check the chat. God have given you your spirit that you may chat the, the new course unto the of an eternal destiny. You see, God will give you a spirit. Those are who are his children. The Bible says those who have not the spirit of Christ, they are none of his. Romans 8 verse 9. Those who don't have the spirit of Christ are none on his. Those who are born of God will be led by his spirit. And the thing he has prepared in the realm of the spirit, I have not seen other, another year ahead. The things he has prepared for those that love him. So all these things are in realm in the spirit. Yes, right now. I want to, to see there are many good things God has prepared for you. They are in the realm of the spirit. Your eye have not seen, your ear have not You have no understanding of it. Your mind cannot grasp them. But the spirit of man in the in man, the inspiration of the Almighty will give you understanding. Job 32 8. The Spirit of God in you will stir you up. Then you begin to know things you have not known before. And you begin to move from where you are to where you want to go. You begin to chart a new course. How? By the Spirit that is given to you. That is the calling of God upon your life. You have been called. So anytime there is a shift in the Spirit, anytime there is a movement in your heart, Anytime you are discerning many, many, many things, stay cool and begin to pray and begin to wait on God and begin to say, Lord, what do you have for me? Lord, what do we do? Because the things he wants about to do, your eye have not seen, your ear have not heard, you have not discerned them before, but he can reveal them to you because you are his child and he loves you. Hallelujah. Oh, I love the shifting in the spirit. There will be movement, some movement. In the realm of our spirit. You are a believer. There can be some difficulty. Look at Anna. Things were not easy for her. Ah, huh? It was not normal, natural. They said, but the Bible said, God have shut the womb. And he said, God remember me. God remember me. She was praying and crying unto God. Until he moved on further. To make that vow. And make that covenant. And he seed it. And God said, amen to it. See, now you get a child. He will come. He will be mine. He will be in the house. He's going to do that. He didn't know. Hallelujah. But in a desperation, he moved on to that level. And God worked it out. What am I saying? You are a believer. Hear me. It's interesting. We have been called of God. Mm. And God has many good things for our life. But our eyes have not seen them yet. But we have a spirit, and his spirit will stir us up. Hallelujah. My counsel is this. Let's read Hebrews 12 and then verse number 11. I love that. Hebrews 12, verse number 11. Kaboshe Komo. Not slothful in business, fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. Listen, if you want to do the things that be of God, then your spirit will be fervent, hot. Not cold, not lukewarm. You should be hot, on fire. Let your spirit be fervent so that you can discern and you can begin to receive. It's just like you put your charger, you, put, you, you connect your, your phone to the charger and put it on the, and it begins to work and it's operating. After a while, you see, you get full charge. Huh? And when it's full charge, it means you, you are connected to the networks. Is that true? Fully charged. You have some data on it. It is connected. Hallelujah. Fully charged. But when the battery ran down, uh oh, you can have all the data on it, but the battery is run down. So you, listen, it's by your spirit that you connect to God. Hallelujah. My, my prayer is that please, 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 for Christ's sake, let your spirit be fervent. Put it on the chart. Get on with the saints praying. Pray in the spirit. Be fervent in the spirit. And when you get charged, charge up. You are now ready 
to receive the things that are made for you. Your eye have not seen it, but you have a spirit that is connected to God the Almighty. Who reveal things to you? Things you don't know. Things to come. Things I have not seen. Neither in your head. These are meant for you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a short story. We were in Takrati in 2011. And in November 2011. We were praying and fasting. So we prayed for a while. We prayed to continue praying. And then the Lord revealed to me. We got to have a church in Kasua. So I knew we were going to have a church in Kasua. So, but I thought we, I am going to lead that church. So we started planning. So I called Pastor Alfred who was with me at the time. I, I instructed him. Pastor Alfred. You are going to pastor this church. Takradi church. We will be locating a Kaswa. To start a new work. I thought I was going there. So we planned it. And so we started making preparation. We went in there. And then we bought some speakers. We bought some amplifiers. We, we were just planning. How? Because there is a movement in my spirit. And I knew that we were going to have a church there. And we must go. So that's it. So we were just making preparation. That was 2011. So by 2012, July, we were then past Alfred take over Takrari Church. And then we left and travel outside to the States. And then we came back. When I returned, we were at Takrari for about three months and then we located in Sunyane. That was the time we were planning for our 25th anniversary. And I said, oh, okay, let's free the 25th anniversary before we'll be going there. Then the Lord started now speaking to my heart. By the time a year-round anniversary went through, Reverend Alasa, who saw my car in Accra, came to me and said, Pastor, we want to start a church in Kaswa. I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, I thought I was going to do that. I knew it by way back 2011. How do I know it? By my spirit. In seasons of fasting and praying. I was in link and then I knew it. And I started already making preparation towards that. So he came to me and he gave me that. I said, I'll be there with them. I will be there. And then we, we said, carry this equipment to go and start the work there. Because it was meant for that. Are you with me? What am I saying? If your spirit is not fervent, if you will not pray in the spirit, if you will not spend time with him, brother, you'll be where you are. You begin to plateau in life. It's, you want to move to new heights, but you will not go. Why? You don't know what is in the realm of a spirit. You don't know how to move upstairs. You don't know how to connect to him. You don't know how to tap into the thing that are prepared for your life. So you just plateau. You are the same level. The same level. The same level. But you need to go to new heights. Please, please, please. The thing God has prepared for you, your eye has not seen. Get into, into the realm of a spirit. There shall be a revelation that will cause you to chart a new course. You begin to chart a new path. Why? Because God has revealed them to you. When you begin to know them, then you take the needed steps over them. Then you begin to have new goals coming from God. You begin to attain new heights because the Spirit of the Lord is coming over you. And you know it. Brother, anytime you spend time and pray and fast and wait on God, pay attention to your spirit. And what God has revealed to you. Because it is written. Mm, when you read Job 38, 38 and then 32 and verse 8. He said there's, there's, uh, there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the almighty gave them understanding. In those seasons your spirit can be stirred up. And ideas and wisdoms of God can be dropped in there. There are things you will know. <laughs> it will surprise you. And you will not struggle to have it done. I believe the time has come and the seasons are now. That the church should rise and pray. That we should wait on God. For these days they have it. Let's see how we can 
bring in the harvest. But it is not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit. By the moving of a spirit in the church. By the stirring of the giftings of the law. And the church will begin to do exploits. Those that know their God will be strong and do exploits. May you be part of the team of exploits. Oh, come on. You, may you be part of those call in these last days for greater works. Greater works than these shall you do. You're going to do greater work. Why? Your spirit is in tune with God. He's going to anoint you with fresh oil. He's going to act, give you grace. Mercies and favor will pour. Opportunities will come your way. New doors are opening. Why? Because you are in tune with God and your spirit is vibrant and you hear his voice and you know what he wants you to do. Stop crying and start believing and start praying. And may the heavens over you be opened. And may his spirit be poured on thee. May you be that brother, that sister who he knows the will of God and these last days, who stands for it. And may God use you more than ever before. You see someone brought into the temple and he will be with the priest who instruct him how to hear the voice of God. May you be in the house of God how you can be taught how to hear his voice so that your life will be ordered. That you will not just walk like anyhow. You will be ordered and his presence shall be over you. I want to pray with you today. Mm, be on your feet and we will pray. We honor you today, Father. We give you thanks. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that these last days, yes, Lord, Marie Katanda Yekulobo, these are the last days, seasons of exploits. Let the heavens be opened. Grant a discerning heart. May we see the things that are made for our good. May we receive from you the things that are ordained for our life. For thou hast said, the things that have prepared for us, I have not seen, neither ear heard. But our spirit will descend them. Grant us grace that even as we receive from thee, we be doers. May we believe in the things that have revealed to us. And may we walk in faith, fulfilling the will of God. That the promises and the pledge you have made will keep it. And thou will preserve our life. To walk in the path of righteousness set ahead of us. I pray for everyone who is ready. My God, may your grace be poured on him. By the ocean of the Lord be his portion. By the anointing break the yoke. Bring them to new heights and new levels. Reveal to them things you have prepared. And let the joy of the Lord be their portion. Inspire them, Lord. Inspire them into new heights. We honor thee, O God. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? Do you need Jesus in your heart? Please pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I come to you just as I am. Please accept me and forgive my sins. Please come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And may his spirit be your portion. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russell Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-614965. Thank you and God bless you. In glory and in majesty, every eye will see.